culture is an essential in international business environment or global business environment because it influences how multinational and cross-cultural teams interact and collaborate. It dictates the business world values, ethics, thinking patterns, decision-making styles, practices, as well as processes. Therefore, this video is mainly focused on the cross-cultural issues in international businesses. Let's first understand what is a cross-cultural team. Cross-cultural team are global teams that include people who come from different cultures and unique experiences. Companies fail to consider these fundamental differences within a team may lead to conflicts and frustration that can be easily let down once you gain quick understanding of the individuals in a team. Now, let's see the importance of cross-cultural teams. Actually, cultural diversity empowers people to develop their talents and skills. A range of ideas and expertise enable those to learn from more diverse collection of ideas through their colleagues. It can also boost problem-solving capabilities as well as it will increase the happiness and productivity. Not only that, innovations through varied perspectives and lens of looking at the world tend to be give new ideas and creative thinking which will suffice organizational success as well as human engagement. In the globalized economy, Cultural sensitivity is essential. As more companies grow, the global marketplace becomes more accessible for small businesses. The multinational and cross-cultural teams are becoming more common. This means that it is crucial now more than ever for the businesses to understand the critical issues in cross-cultural teams if they wish to succeed internationally. Communication is one of the key pillars for the success of a team. Effective communication is particularly important as there is a risk of your message is getting lost in translation. People from different cultures communicate differently. Businesses who are looking to operate internationally with cross-cultural teams need to be aware of language barriers, tone, and body language. Some cultures emphasize direct and simple method of communication, while others rely heavily on indirect and complex methods. Countries like United States, Australia, and UK are more direct, that is, precise and open and more emotional. Whereas, some countries like China, Japan, and India are more direct. There are more importance given to non-verbal communication. For example, in countries like US or Germany, it is common for people to speak loudly and be more assertive when sharing ideas among colleagues. However, in countries like Japan, people typically speak more softly, have a more passive tone when making suggestions to colleagues. Cross-cultural communication can be a challenge, but approaching cultural differences with sensitivity, openness, and curiosity can help businesses succeed internationally. 
Another critical issue in cross-cultural teams is the cultural shock. Cultural shock can be described as the confusion that people feel due to mismatch between culture and its own views and beliefs. It's a condition that employees experience by having the difficulty to adapt the new culture as a result of insecurities and disorientations. Due to this, some members in the cross-cultural team may lose self-confidence and may emotionally be upset or some may isolate themselves or even plan to go back to home because they have not overcome their fears as well as insecurities. Cultural conflict is the clash between one culture and another as a result of mismatch between the values as well as beliefs. There are two types of cultural conflicts, primary as well as secondary. Primary is involved with the fundamental cultural beliefs, whereas secondary does not involve values that are seen as critical to the group conflicting. There are several factors which may cause into the cultural conflict. The first one is the differences in the cultural beliefs in religion. Employees want religious beliefs and practices to be accommodated, including time during the workday for rituals and time off from work for observances. The best example is the Muslims may request a time to attend their Friday prayers. Then, failing to recognize the differences in the religions and respecting the need of individual employees may lead to team conflict. Sometimes, it may also cause the scheduling problems as well as employee turnover. The next one is the differences in the cultural values. Every culture has its unique set of values. Such as Japanese employees may place a great deal of value on time. They are punctual. They may even see time as money and resent people who waste their time. So if you put this type of a person with someone who doesn't place value on time, then this can provide a ground for intercultural conflict. The third factor which causes the cultural conflict is the different context in culture. So there may be cross-cultural conflict because of these high and low context cultures. High context culture will use communication that focus on underlined context, meaning and tone in the message and not just the words themselves. Most of the time, this high context culture can be experienced in the Japan, China, France, Spain and Brazil. Whereas in low context culture, such as those in the North America, Germany tend to be logical, analytical and action oriented. They are concerned with the individuals. So they you must see how these cross-cultural conflicts which will hamper the team community in the cross-cultural settings.
Work culture is a collection of attitudes, beliefs and behavior in a working environment. It is created through the behavior of everyone working in an organization from top to bottom. Work culture differs across the globe. Some cultures are okay with flat organizational structures, whereas others are used to a formal hierarchy. In a cross-cultural team, it is crucial to be familiar with the preferences and behavioral patterns of colleagues who come from different continents. For instance, a team member from Japan, which is a hierarchical culture, expected to be treated differently according to their status in the corporation. While on the other hand, workers from the democratic cultures such as UK may, does not feel like that. They may respect equality. Failure of some members to honor those expectations can cause humiliation as well as loss of credibility. So another issue related to work culture is the openness. This could be challenging for individuals from polite or differential cultures like for Asian people. They may feel less comfortable to make their voice to be heard or to share ideas, especially when they are new to the organization, to the team, or they may have a junior role in the team. On the other hand, members from Western cultures are used for the flat organization hierarchy they may be more inclined to point out their opinion and raise their voice when it comes to decision making. Each member in a team has a special working method or a style that is largely determined by their culture. Work style is a collection of attitudes and behaviors which used to accomplish employee duties. It will also determine how members will interact with others in the cross-cultural teams. In monochronic cultures such as US or Germany, most of the people prefer a well-organized and systematic work style. They will do one particular thing at a time. In polytonic cultures such as France, Southern Italy, they may prefer more spontaneous as well as a flexible approach. They may parallelly do several things at once. In these cultures, there is no clear case for one being superior to other. Some cultures are encouraged, diversity, and recognize individual contributions, such as Germany and America. They may emphasize on the independence of the individuals, which means individualism. Whereas others like, for instance, many Asian as well as Central American countries they may value collective consensus or collectivism when they are working toward the goal. Therefore, despite these variations in working style, it is crucial to filter and maximize each team member's strength for the success of the organization. Now let's see how stereotypes and prejudice cause issues among cross-cultural teams. Stereotype is a specific belief about an individual, community, 
group or culture regardless of their individual characteristics the basis of stereotyping can be many things though the most common are nationality gender race religion or age as example that all the germans are punctual and very direct that all the asians are good at maths these beliefs are over generalized to all members of the group even though many of the individual group members may in fact be struggle academically and professionally as same as another one is black male athletes are often believed to be more athletic than their white male counterparts actually in the olympic you can see both the winning then let's see what is prejudice it is a negative attitude and feeling toward an individual based solely on their attachment toward a particular social group there are explicit as well as implicit prejudice explicit prejudice is the negative feeling about a group that are openly admitted whereas implicit prejudice is a relatively automatic and unconscious and it is difficult to measure if things get far on a team or in a company working together effectively can be extremely difficult therefore we have to control the stereotypes as well as prejudices among the group members and we have to create a respect among each other when it comes to cross cultural teams there may be differences in the decision making style some of the team members may make decisions quickly whereas others may be slow some are more analytical while others are more mechanical as example us managers are known to like to make decisions very quickly there may be relatively little analysis by the comparison with other managers from other countries such as asian managers dedicate more time for analysis therefore if someone who prefers make it decisions quickly may go frustrated with those who need more time to make decisions different cultures have different attitudes some may be conflict as a positive thing but most of others people may see conflict is something which need to be avoided you know that americans are very specific and explicit in terms of their agreements however the asians will never pick up face to face confrontation they will keep quiet in the case of disagreement or conflict successful negotiations are an essential element of every business transaction as well as in relationships but negotiating among cross cultural members in a team is very challenging due to these differences there may be issues in the members among the cross cultural teams negotiation is a method by which people settle the differences or resolve an issue in a way that both parties find acceptable there are several main areas where cultural difference impact negotiating sanex in 2005 identify there are many factors in cross cultural negotiations 
the major difference caused among the negotiation is the difference view with regard to the negotiation code. In some cultures, people may view the negotiation as the desire for to have a long-term relationship. Whereas in other cultures, they just see the negotiation as just one time deal. Most of the time, Spanish speakers view negotiation as the mean to have a contract. Their negotiation goal is just signing a contract between the parties or just make a deal with the colleague. Whereas, in the Asian countries, they believe negotiation is the pathway to kill a better business relationship. They will dedicate more time and effort to create a relationship through negotiation to have a long-term relationship. The other factor which causes the differences among negotiation is the negotiating attitude. There are two types of attitudes in the negotiation. One is win-win, the other one is win-lose. In the win-win, negotiators see the deal-making as a collective problem-solving process. Whereas win-lose Negotiators may see it as an argumentative and competitive process. As you enter into a negotiation, it is important to know which type of negotiator is sitting across the table from you. If you are sitting with a Japanese person, he may think the negotiation as a win-win process. Therefore, you can do a collective work in the negotiation. However, if the other party is a Spanish person, then he may be the negotiation as a win-lose process. Therefore, your negotiation may be argumentative. This is an issue in the cross-cultural team. Personal style concerns the way a negotiator talks to others, use titles, dresses, speaks, and interact with other persons. Culture strongly influences the personal style of the negotiators. A negotiator with a formal style insists on addressing colleagues by their designation or titles. They may avoid personal names, anecdotes, and refrains from questions touching on the private or family life. Whereas a negotiator with the informal style try to start the discussion on a first name basis. They may quickly seek to develop a personal friendly relationship, such as Sometimes they may take off the jacket or roll up the sleeves of the negotiating parties. For example, Americans calling someone by the first name is an act of friendship and therefore a good thing. For Japanese, the use of the first name at a first meeting is an act of disrespect. Therefore, they may consider this as a bad experience. Most of the time, Germans have more formal style than Americans. So, the general rule is, it's always safer to adopt formal posture and move into informal
the style during negotiation should be carefully considered. Direct negotiation cultures believe being honest and truthful is essential when delivering information as well as opinions. However, indirect negotiation cultures may believe maintaining harmony and protecting feelings is essential when delivering information as well as opinion. You often find that most direct cultures are English speaking, such as the USA, Australia and Canada. You often find that most indirect cultures are in ethnically homogeneous nations such as Thailand, Japan as well as South Korea. Do you know that emotionalism is a factor which causes differences or issues among the cross-cultural teams? Because in some teams, there may be members which may display their emotions. However, some of the members may neutral or hide their feelings, especially Latin Americans and Spanish members in a team may show their emotions at the negotiating table. However, the Japanese and some members in the Asian region may hide their feelings in the negotiation table. Therefore, having a strong sense of emotional intelligence is crucial for success in an international business, especially with cross-cultural teams. Thank you. Hope you have a better understanding with regard to the cross-cultural teams and what are the issues they are going to face when they are in the multicultural settings. So in my next video, I will talk about how to manage these issues in the cross-cultural settings. Stay tuned and follow the channel.